Thank you very much. It's a real honor to be here. And unlike Bill Gates, I know I can't solve the world's problems. So I'm going to take you through some steps that you can do that we can start saving, help save the world. In Lake County in 2008, a small group of people came together and said, what can we do for our economy? And I want to let you know, they say today's economic crisis is tough, sure, maybe worse than the Great Depression. But in rural Oregon and rural across the country, clear across the country, we've been going through 8 to 20% unemployment for two decades. We know what it's like that long to go. And I think renewable energy can be some of the saviors to rural America. And I like to say, you know, just to give you a little background of what drives me, I think it started during the Cuban crisis. Very, very young man, school, and uh, John F. Kennedy was president. And uh, I started paying attention to world, the world and politics and everything. And I carry something with me from the president ever since. One thing that I carry most of all is the saying, uh, do not ask what your country can do for you, but for what you can do for your country. And then the other thing, I think, I don't know, maybe he wasn't, but I haven't seen too many presidents since that had a vision for this country. When he said in 10 years we're going to land on the moon, and we did it. Now, I want to see leaders, and you are the future leaders, I want to see you or somebody stand up and lead this country and say we're going to be fossil fuel free in 10 years. And I believe we can do it if we set our minds to it. So, you know, we're doing about everything, as my introduction mentioned, except Ocean Wave. And, but I've told the people in Lake County, let's not rule that out. With global warming, you know, we may, you don't know. The other thing I want to tell you about Lake County and so much of rural America is we're 78% government land. 8,500 square miles with 7,500 people in Lake County. That's less than one person per mile. We're, USDA not only classifies us as rural, we're frontier. <laughs> but that size and everything, I think it's important to realize that we have to support our public services off 22% of the land. And how are we going to do that? So I'm going to take you through some examples. And the first thing we got into was biomass. And we actually spent eight years attracting a company to come there. And then in November 2010, Ibadrola Renewables broke ground on a $90 million, 26.8 megawatt plant. And I think about December the next year, the renewable energy market crashed in the, in the Northwest, the West Coast. So that is shell, but it's not dead. It's still viable. And what we learned that was going to bring to us in Lake County was not only the 250 construction jobs that went with it, there would be 20 jobs at the plant, and there would be 50 to 75 jobs in the woods. That's tremendous. Business Oregon says that one job in rural Oregon is equivalent to 100 jobs in Multnomah County. And it's that big of an impact. And then we started to look, what's it going to do to our tax base if we can succeed at this? And that tax base is over 2.2 million. It influences our hospitals, our schools, our library, on and on and on. The town, the county, what, without raising taxes on the people, which is not popular today, this is one way to increase your revenue. Then we started looking at geothermal. And just this week, uh, ORMAT and uh, Nevada Geothermal uh, issued the orders to lay the pad for the well at the Crump Geyser. They had already dug the reinjection well. That'll be a 30 megawatt plant at a known source that we've known for, oh, oh got to be almost a decade, 100, I mean, not a decade, a century. And that source was 300 degrees water. And the other thing that's happened in Lake County is half of the county is in a public utility. Well, in fact, there were two public utilities. They've all been hydro. They're not looking at renewables, except the Bonneville Power Administration says, you only have 10 years left, and we will not be able to supply your customers. So Surprise Valley is right now digging the second well. They thought it was going to be the reinjection well, but now it's going to be a second production well because they had another great source. And 
that's going to be, it was going to be two megawatts, and depending on how this works out, it's going to be four megawatts. So we got this, and we also have the potential of known sources when the market comes back of exceeding over 100 megawatts. Every geothermal plant will be, if they're in that 30 megawatt plus, will be around 20 jobs to 25 jobs per plant. That's huge. Again, remember that multiplier. It is big. And the one I really love is the backscatter site. This is solar. This was the Air Force. So they built it uh, for incoming missiles. So it was a radar uh, installation. They tested it one day, flipped off the switch, and satellite technology took over. And it's been sitting there all these years. Well, the Oregon National Guard has now become, Oregon's become the owner of the facility, not the Air Force, through trade and purchase. And they just installed the 157 kW solar system there. And it's tied to the internet for learning. And why? Our military, what do they use in the Middle East for power? We've got to train the military how to use solar. So Treasure Valley Community College and my organization are going to be teaching solar at this facility. Plus, we'll be able to take that data and teach in our schools, our high schools and other places. And they want to grow that to two megawatts of solar power. Not big stuff. We're not changing the whole world. Solar does not create um, a lot of jobs. You know, 15 to 20 during construction, and it takes one person to clean glass. I mean, that's it. So it's at the low end of the job creation compared to biomass and, and uh, uh, geothermal and wind is the third and then down to that. But again, what's the taxes going to be on that? It's going to be over $60,000 a year when built. You know, that one solar facility, uh, Pacific Bauer, Power will, uh, excuse me, will be building a two megawatt system. Uh, come this May, they're going to break ground on solar. And uh, then Obsidian Finance just filed for their enterprise zone uh, for uh, tax re you know, abatement and they will start construction through this summer too. And then we've got six others that are online once the market turns around. So the potential is really getting good. And our goal of making it by December 2012? Yeah, we're not gonna, uh, darn it. Um, but it's under construction. To be a net exporter, we will meet that. And not only will we meet it, we've identified that we will beat our goal now that we've been in it for four years, by 700% if we can get all this done when the market change. That's going to make a difference. The, one of the greatest projects, I think, is the town of Lakeview. And our plan that we put together for this over that uh, um, four-year period was to do a, a heating district, geothermal heating district to the hospital. The new hospital, it's got a brand new wing, and the whole the other part was totally uh, remodeled. It was about $26 million. The year they passed the bond, it was only bound to pass in the state of Oregon. Pretty proud of Lake County for that one. Beautiful facility. We've got four schools. Through the stimulus bill, there are now the hospital and all the schools are retrofitted for geothermal. And the town's bringing in a line. They've leased the ground. They're in negotiations, or they're about at the final to get a 45-year loan from USDA. And this will all go to geothermal. They were all on fuel oil. Talk about carbon emissions, every one of them. Hospital will save $100,000 a year. That was a cost that they had to spend for heat. Now it can pay for a nurse. And a quarter of a doctor? I'm not sure. But anyway, <laughs> you know, somewhere. But you know, it's expendable money. The schools, depending on the size, will save from sixty dollars to $80,000 a year apiece. What a difference. What a difference. We're looking at four-day four school week. We're looking at cutting programs. We can start saving that kind of money. We may not have to do that. That's the impact that this has. And I think that's a great impact. And people will say, well, we don't have geothermal, or we don't have this. There are alternatives. And I think we've got some of the best examples in the state of Oregon. And I really believe that the state of Oregon is going to be a, a leader in this world in renewable energy. That's his personal belief. But sisters, high school. Heated by pellets, wood pellets. Burns Hospital, heated by wood pellets. 
you got these forests, they're overstocked, they need the small diameter stuff. What do you do with the small diameter? You can't make a two by four out of it, but you can make a pellet out of it and you can save your hospital. I think Burns says they're saving between 60 and $80,000 a year in costs to heat that hospital. And then Wallowa Resources all, also has one. So we got great examples. You don't need geothermal to do the same thing. You can create heating districts downtown with wood. I know Southern Oregon University is investigating, can they do the whole campus by doing pellets and wood? What a great deal, what a great savings. This is one of my favorite ones, ground source heat pumps. They are just amazing. It's really old technology. And uh, Pike University uh, and, uh, said that in 2011, there's about 150,000 of these being installed in the United States. By 2017, that'll hit 350,000. Now, the Ford Family Insta Leadership Institute did a study they wanted to know what was my organization and renewables having as an economic impact in businesses and homes, not big energy stuff. What were you doing in there over a two-year period? And they hired Richard Gardner, a PhD economist, to do that study. And we were all surprised when it came back. We are saving those 22 uh, businesses and homes $125,000 a year in energy cost. One, a businessman who we did his home, actually he put it in and we helped him and certified it. He is saving enough that one of his kids are here at Oregon State and it's paying all the dormitory fees, the savings from electricity. So, and Mr. Gardner said that, you know, the, over the life of the equipment, those 22 would save $1.9 million. Wow. And then he looked at what we have on the drawing board. It will reach over $9 million in savings. Now that was once dedicated income. And take a business, in many rural areas we got vacant storefronts, boarded up storefronts, just hard to make a living out in real rural areas. Well, what if you knock four to $600 a month off that overhead? Now that becomes new expendable income. And for the homeowner, that can be help pay a college education, can put down payment on a car, I mean, you change from what was dedicated expense to an expendable income, and it can make a great difference in your community. Oh, I got to back up. I'm always, I like the, the house on the, the left up there in the left corner. Um, in town, it's hard to put in horizontal ground source heat pumps, and I won't get into all the technology, but the option is vertical. Vertical is not a payback. No, the payback on that is very, it's very costly, and the payback is very long. So we used a gravel driveway. And then he's now in town and using ground source heat pumps. We've got two people in town that now have gone off the grid and used Pacific Power as their backup power. And I think that's cool, you know. <laughs> then the one on the right, I love that house. And it's finished now, and it's good friends of mine. That's a straw bell house. And down the corner, they're putting in a ground source heat pump using the coil system, another type of system that you can utilize. And uh, their whole house is heated from either wood or from the ground source heat pump. And it's a, it's a great facility. We're going to start having tours this summer because we've done a lot of these now. The other one that's going big and, and happened a lot is solar. Particularly as solar prices are dropping for the materials for the cost of stuff. It's really, we see more and more of that happen. It's going to, solar a year ago wasn't uh, too good on a payback. But it's getting more and more so. And... This is a radiant floor, so you heat water, you, you run your pipes in those grooves as you're building the house. And if you've ever been in a house where you get up every morning and you've got a hot floor to step on, it's fabulous. It's just really fabulous. My son's building a log home in, just out of Seattle, and he's putting this system in too. And, and again, the new technology with these um, round cylinder solar collectors, we just got some bids that we can put in Solar hot water heaters for about $1,800, and that's at a 20% profit. That payback starting to, will turn over good. I won't tell you where we're buying them, darn it. Um, <laughs> but they are certified by U.S. standards. The other, the other thing that is happening is the job creation that I talked about. And if all, all the things that we're doing, we're going to be able to create over 200, around 200 jobs. And I think it's going to get more. Now, 
the retained jobs are just important. I mean, you know, when we lost five mills and had one left, you know, we lost waitresses, we lost bank clerks, you know, that ripple effect. Now you've got, you know, the jobs created, they support all that secondary jobs, those retained jobs that can be there. We've already, the mill says twice, we've helped save that mill. That's 85 jobs, you know, by the work that we're doing in renewable energy and doing forest health things to thin out the forest. So it is a great, great uh, job creator. But you know, I think the biggest thing that we're doing, and we're just starting to look at this, is the impact on our CO2 production in Lake County. We have calculated up that we will be able to, if everything comes around, and it may take, uh, you know, five, ten years, I don't know the time frame, uh, but when the market comes back and we get all this stuff on the ground, we will be saving over 270,000 tons per year of carbon dioxide emissions from fossil fuels. And I'm just talking fossil fuels. And that is about 91% of our emissions from cars, trucks, uh, fuel oil, etc. all the fossil fuel that we emit out there. 91%. And that's, I think that's amazing. And what I really think is amazing is we're a Republican county. What if we could be, <laughs> now get this, what if we could be the first count, Republic, county in the United States to offset all our carbon emissions? <laughs> hey. <laughs> and I also want you to think, let's think what if 100 communities did this? What if 1,000 communities did this? The, the, Picture that Bill Gates put up is an enormous problem. It's huge that we got to solve. I'm one that I say, let's take a step at a time. You know, in the global warming debate, what's it all about? It's about it's too costly. Isn't that the biggest, you know, or you don't believe in it, but yeah, anyway. Um, well, I think I've showed you that we can do something about it. Let's not go back to the 1970s gas oil wars and not do nothing, okay? Nothing, not doing nothing, let's all agree. That's not an acceptable answer. We've got to do something. If it's good for the country and it's good economically, how can you fight that? And let's get that part done and then we can worry about the bigger ones. So let's do that all across the country and then see where we're at and we'll analyze that and take on the big challenges. So. So I hope, and I think I heard it from the previous speakers, you've seen, we had a group of speakers up here that are really doing stuff that can change the world. And I hope all you students, we need leaders, real leaders that can see a future and, and go out there. And you're gonna be those leaders. I'm in the twilight of my career. Oh, you gotta excuse me, I have a saliva problem, so if I don't have water, I can't talk, which could be a blessing. So, you know, you are the leaders, and I truly believe it isn't government that does this. It is individuals who work hard and do it, and so it, it's up to you. And I hope when you leave here, you're not talking about, you know, whose talk was good or bad, but how you might contribute to be, to solve these problems and make a more sustainable earth, because that's what it's all about. We've got to get to that. And if it's baby steps at a time, it's baby steps at a time. But let's start moving forward. Again, you know, doing nothing is not going to be an excuse anymore. So thank you very much.